This is Comet Picks by the Glick. Hey, I'm your host, Jason Glick. How are you doing, Jason Glick? I'm doing just fine, John. You? Yeah, excellent. Um, I'm all right. Mm-hmm. All right. So this week, as I promised last week, it's what I certainly would think is the uh, long-awaited um, review of my of um, Naoki Urasawa's um, 20th Century Boys. Now, I've raved for for year, for literally years about this series, about how much I've enjoyed how it's thoroughly, thoroughly compelling read, and I was all set to anoint it um, as you know. You know, barring anything going horribly wrong, um, as like my favorite series of last year, had Viz actually uh, kept with the um, bi-monthly release schedule, they didn't. So now, so, so now like we've got the final last 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 volume of the series just came out, as I said two weeks ago, and uh, you know it's like as I I closed off last um, last podcast by saying you know like I was looking for something, I was dying to find it. It's like I was like my enjoyment of the series. Was, so I'm, I was just trying to make it sound like my enjoyment of this series is going to hinge on this particular thing. Well, let me just say that I, pr- I actually, to be perfectly honest, I actually, I actually did wind up, wind up finding it, for, for lack, of a better, lack of a better term. So, let me start off by telling you what the series is, what the series is about. It starts off in the, uh, like in the, wa- it's like the waning days of the tw- 20th century and focuses on this one, this one guy named Kenji. He's just, you know, average... Like average Japanese Japanese guy working working in a conven- in a convenience store, um, just like used used to be in a band. Used to have a vivid vivid imagination as a kid, but now he's just you know just letting just just um, watching life go by, taking care of the uh, of the uh, kid that his um, that his sister um, dropped in his in his in his mom's lap a couple a couple of years back, and I'm um, just trying to just. You know, just going by, just watching watching life go by, and just thinking about you know, hey, it's like how I think about the times when he said he'd never sing karaoke, but now that's what that's what he does. When one of his buddies, who they all who they call affectionately called Donkey, um, um, like dies mysteriously, it's said to be a suicide, but we find out that it's that it may be more to it. Specifically, the fact that um, he, apparently he was he. He was investigating this this mysterious cult called called the Friends, which um, Kenji eventually realizes that hey, they're using the same um, symbol that I that I me and my friends used to use as a kid, and then and eventually he's um he's um clued directly into the fact that the, that these um friends are actually a, actually some sort of like um kind of cult who are basically um operating on on like this period of togetherness being like of like of being friends and um uh, but also um. Per- also perpetrating terrorist acts um, that go in accordance with the uh, crazy prophecies that he and his friends thought up as kids. So, so he takes it upon himself to find out just what's going on with what's going on with them and and I got, and how how they can be stopped. Now, that's only like that's only like the first third of this story. It's like it's this story takes place in three three distinct eras. You got like the le- got well at the time it was kind of the present present day in like. In, 19, in the end, like 1997 and 1999, as um, Kenji and his friends like do their whole okay, we're like you know it's like yeah we're we're not the people people who we imagined growing up to be, you know except for his, even his um buddy his buddy um Ocho who was also who's now known as the um uber badass Shogun after after he had after his life completely after he had a, like a breakdown after after his son died and he and he went out went up to Thailand and is now living as the um uber vigilante badass shogun but everyone else i mean he's got his buddy mar Maro's like running a ramen shop um his buddy is his, his um his quiet um his quiet somewhat nerdy friend yoshisune is like working in, is um doing is basically being a sa- salary man it's like and some of the and his other buddies just haven't um just have either dropped off the face of the earth or just you know not not returning his calls oh there's also um um yukiji the uh the uh, let's say the one one quote unquote gr- female member of, of the group who who's now working as a customs off- officer and just you know so she's still kind of the strong strong female type of this, this group. But anyway, first third of the story basically um, has has Kenji and his friends I'm um, trying to um, track track down the friend and um, stop and stop his his machinations in any way they any way they can. Now wouldn't be wouldn't be a story the story wouldn't have gone on for 24 volumes if they had succeeded right here. So the um, second stage of the story, which takes place in 2014, um, basically has them. Um, basically has the um, has Japan, like has has Japan coming up. Basically has has Japan um, under the sway of the friends. They've evolved into like the dominant political party, 
after they um, save the world in, it's like in an event known as the Bloody New Year's Eve. Now, most of the story here focuses on on, on Ken, Kenji's niece Kana and her say and her and her struggle to like to, um, to try and topple the f- friends regime in her own, in her own way, as well as um, her interactions with the uh, with um, members of um Ken with um members of Kenji's um like inner circle who managed to survive the uh, like survive the uh, like the um, bl- like bloody New Year's Eve. I won't go into what the uh, last. It's like last last arcs um, um, compasses. That's that's kind of that's almost spoiler territory. But what makes the story such a compelling read is that um, Urasawa and his um, co- and his co-writer um, Takashi Nagasaki um, do a like um, just are re- are ex- are ve- do a very good job of just like just, just um, like li- uh, of getting the basics for for telling suspenseful suspenseful stories. Like you've got you've got great. Great, interesting characters from Ken, from Kenji, who is you know trying to um, recapture the glory days of his youth in the uh, in trying in say in um in trying to trying to stop the friends and just basically live up trying to be the man he like the hero he always wanted. Yet um o- Ocho, who uh, um it's like who, whose life took took a turn that he never existed, but he's going to be like the um, the badass that any kind of group that's going to save the world um really needs. And even um Yoshitsune, who uh. It was always like the quiet, the quiet one who you expect, you'd most expect people to let to let the other guys down. He's actually he actually wind, winds up going to be um, one of the um, more, like 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 a going to be a lead going to be the leader and the one who like save, sa- winds up saving the, saving the group and preventing lots of deaths. And it's like in the end when the, when it comes time for the showdown, showdown with the friends. You also got um like um Connor herself is also. It's like is also I'm um, very much very much a badass and a compelling character as she tries to as she faces um insurmountable odds and with her um, own special powers as well more on that later. You've also got um other other interesting supporting characters like it's like um ca- like the homeless homeless guy Kami Kami-sama whose dreams um are said to pre- um are said to um, predict the future and come true for certain in it's like in certain cases. And um, also, and also, um, Koi, um, um, Koizumi, Koizumi Kyoko, um, who is um, essentially added mainly for comic relief, but she is like the uh, prototypical girl in over her head when she when she espouses a belief about you know, hey, like, you know, maybe things about the uh, Bloody New Year's Eve didn't actually go down the way they 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 describe, they, like the official history said, and all because she was stalling for it for a way to uh, you know, stalling for a way to uh, get. Get out of doing her book book report, and um, she winds up be, winds up becoming sucked deep into the into the anti friends anti friends movement, and like, her life just completely upended upended as a result. But she but she's also like I'm very like very but her um, exasperation and desperation is also very very amusing as well. But all, and the storytelling itself is also like also proceeds like like clockwork. Ursula um. At, if you've ever read, if you've read Monster, you know the man's a, is a natural for um, slowly escalating tension and just like laying down the uh, like the right, like the right way, like the right scenario at the at the right time. He just keeps like he just he knows how to like he knows how to properly set up like like set up a situation to let you know that the um, that even though the good guys have a plan, the bad guys also have have one as well. And that that can get that can get kind of frustrating after after a while. He knows he can also like. Thing, spin new and interesting circumstances out of these, it's like out of these um con- out of these situations, such as when um, such as a, uh, a gathering that um Kana ga- Kana, Kana manages in the uh, it's like in 2014 is supposed it's he sets it up he sets it up to um that it's it's basically like there's going to be it's going to kill this is going to be um an ass- it's actually like part of the friend's plot to assassinate her, but then he tur- winds up turning it on its head um, once the actual once the actual deed goes down. It's like it, and even though there are sometimes that the that his storytelling, and like it, there are sometimes when his storytelling doesn't quite um, come come through. It does feel like a bit um, rote or pro form pro formula, such as um, when he's one point later on when. Um, Shojo, Shogun is traveling with um, some with, with some guys um, after an, after a disease outbreak um, has ha- has happened, and then um, they I think they're all working together and thinking, oh, we've got to we got to stay together in order to like make in order to um, like stick it out through this this crisis. But then one, this one this messenger comes up and says, oh hey, here's a 
like here's a vaccine for you because you were at the expo. Here you go. It's like you're you're going to live. And then their entire group just automatically disintegrates because you know, hey, he's got the he's got the uh, like he. Like this guy's got the cure, and we've all got to inject it, in or- and one of us is going to have to inject it in order to stay stay alive. I mean, it's it, it's on one hand, it's it's he's, it's just like a I guess like a anecdote he's using to try and like show like the utter hopelessness of the situation situation at this time. But at the same time, it's like it's like so obvious that it kind of defeats the uh, the purpose of things. Plus, there there are also some broader um, questions of plausibility. It's like even then, like you kind of wonder like how the uh, Friends managed to escape suspicion um, when um, when they suddenly produce the, uh, the, um, the the vaccine the world needs on bloody on bloody New Year's Eve. So and we're like, hey, wait, everyone in the world, all the major governments of the world brought it. Um, just like just accepted that they they had it they had it right there. Hmm, I don't think so. But but at the same time though, it's like the um, broader use like the friend the friends um, rise to power does. Like it's it's handled in such an expedient and at least plausible fashion fashion at first because I don't know you can I mean like cults like this are kind of like a um, used to be a dime a dozen in Japan especially with um like this is one of those clues influenced by the um oh, what's it the um Am Shin Ryoko um um cultists the guys who used the um sarin gas back in the mid 90s but they uh so it's so it's easy to see like how the friend could have gathered this gathered this um great this great power, but also um, through the use of his psychic powers. Now, use psychic. Now, those are kind of like more of a um, more of a misdirection or red herring in a lot of in a lot of ways. But um, it's like ultimately they kind of they only they only they serve as kind of like a, a bit of a Deus Ex Machina in order to um, allow certain plot points to take place to to be presented over the over the course of the series, and ultimately for the salvation of mankind in the end. It's like, I... I don't know, it's like, on one hand, I, I'm willing to accept accept their, accept their existence here, because because this is kind of the story that they, uh... Because it kind of stems from the story that these these kids are trying are setting up. You know, it's it's a child, it's a crazy child story that um, got com- blown completely out of control, and of, and of course, like, you know, like, if you're going to, like, like set up a guy who uh, who is going to take over the basically um like rise as far as he did he has to have some kind of edge that allows him to do so and I, and these powers at least at least allow for it but really though one thing that basically like hint that 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 uh, my enjoyment of this series like really kind of hinged on like as it went on is the identity of the friend now I want to talk to you about it's like I want to talk to you about like a like the whole identity of the friend is kind of a huge. Is like it hangs over a lot of this, the series, like 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 a cloud for a lot of this for for a lot of its run. I mean, but um, really, what when I was when I'm reading this, like what it what it calls back to me more than anything else is, believe it or not, um, Jeff Loeb and Tim Sale's Batman: The Long Halloween. Now, for me to digress to digress for a second, right here, The Long Halloween was a uh, was a tw- was a uh, 13 issue maxi series um, from back in the mid 90s, e- easily one of the um, pro- definitely one of the best bat stories bat stories written, and also um, and probably um, one something that, that made Loeb's reputation. It's like because e- which uh, at at DC and in the, in the industry before um, he before he started before he started uh, mortgaging it with his Marvel work. Anyway, but the whole thing was basically like a um, giant mystery about uh, who is Holiday. Who is this guy who's killing all these, um, like all these mob figures on hol- on on hol- on holidays, and and for the most part the uh, and like for the most part it's a generally it was a generally very well constructed series. Hit has Batman on matching wits with like a with one of his villains at each on each on um, holiday, it's like on each specific holiday, and um, up until the final final issue where you find out who like who the killer actually was. Or at least you find out who one of them was, because it turns because in a um, move at the t- very end that basically that basically reeks of the fact that um, Loeb kind of figured felt that his um, that he that he may have been, that his um, that that his orig- that his um, that his secret killer was you know, probably too easily guessed because if you because 
the kill, killer who everyone who person, everyone thought the killer was this one guy um, who had died and you didn't see the body. And of course, you know, okay, he's obviously not dead, and that's because it's going to be like be a um, perfect perfect trick right there to reveal that oh you know he wasn't dead all, all this time he just faked his death so he could you know start to um, operate with impunity and um but then the very the very last pages you find out oh wait um holiday was also this other person um that that popped up as as well so and and that part was kind of like yeah that's wow that's kind of a stretch right there now i, I was all prepared quite prepared to to think that way um with with the conclusion of 20th century boys because and i'm saying this because this is a mine this is a minor spoiler that um it until it that comes very obvious um as it goes as it goes on is that there are actually two friends and um i will say that um the first friend if you are if you, if you have a good knowledge of genre conventions if you like if you are perceptive and pay attention enough you will be able to figure out who this friend is I'll, I'll tell you this. I did, and if you, and if you want to go back and um, do my posts, find out who who I thought it was. Um, you can just search "20th Century Boys" and um, I'll, and you'll see what I said. So, so I just want to say that you know, this, that that was actually good plotting on. Well, it was good plotting on Urasawa's part, even though it's like it's ultimately kind of kind of obvious. I mean, like, I, mean, I was telling my friends, "Oh, it's this guy because of this, this, and this." And uh, my friend, who, would, who was watching the movies before he saw the, uh, before he read all the manga, he said, "Well, yeah, I wanted to tell you, tell you we were right, but at the same time, that's not the entire truth, because, and then once, cause then once he, um, once his identity is revealed, the friend, of course, like you know, he's he's still around, he's still walking around, just like showing, to, you know, do, acting mysteriously around Tokyo and all, and saying, well, what's he doing? What's he, what's his plan? How did he survive?" I had some thoughts about that, but then it kind of became clear. I just felt like I honestly felt like it was like, like Ursa was trying to retcon in this um, this other um, childhood friend of um, Kenji, not childhood friend, this other guy in Ch- Kenji's history who like who had the um, who actually had one of the same characteristics as one of his other one of his other um, childhood acquaintances. And I figured, okay, so he's 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 trying to retcon this guy in. Um, in order to um, give us, make sure we have a surprise at the end. And when I read the final volume and got to the very end, it revealed, oh, and Kenji goes, oh, you're this guy. And I was like, who? Who are you? Wait, no, 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 that's not fair. You, you are pl- like, you're just like pulling, pulling this like identity out of your ass, and we have no idea who this person is. So I was like, ah, oh, God damn it. So, so like, I was worried that I was going to go that, in rereading this, I was going to be like find all the events I needed to just show show that um that you know that it was all just kind of like just fudged things halfway through and just said, oh yeah, I got everyone's gonna be able to guess who this the friend is. I gotta come create come up with someone who um who who they wouldn't be able to guess at all. And yes, he did do that. But here's the thing: after rereading the series, I it's like. I saw. Oh, I saw. Yes, they did mention this guy. They mentioned this guy in the briefest of terms, in the sense that the only way you would be able to guess who this person is is if you just went to the absolute, absolute most ridiculously obscure character in the series and said, "Oh, it's this guy." But at the same time, though, I mean, we. I do regret the fact that we um, don't get actu- any actual that we don't get a whole lot of insight into this character's mind. That we don't actually, you know, get. But at the same time, what we do get, it. I'm um, rereading the series. I actually realize that, oh wait, he actually did set things up. So things actually do. That even if this was a, a, a change, like a change that he planned, um, halfway, like you know, halfway through or so, he actually, like Urasawa and and Nagasaki actually did um, have a, uh, did do a great job of actually um retcon- uh, not retconning, setting up this. Setting up the uh, the switch there. Parts of it when um, part parts of it are seen when um, when we're seeing the uh, the we're going through the the, the the friend's child childhood history. Other things are when we when we see him walking around Tokyo after the friend's after the friend's death, and um, then we find out oh this is why everyone mistook him for the friend, and um, things like and things like that, and also just why he's also just you know. 
just, you know, just completely I'm bent on um, I'm bent about why he has this, has it in for Kenji as well, and and it's but, and also there's all there is also a nice bit on it's like in the uh, like in the manga itself early on when one of the uh, characters one of the neglected one one of the Kenji's neglected childhood acquaintances when he's going when he goes he says he goes back to visit went back to visit his um like Kenji's old neighborhood and realized that nobody recognized him reason is because like everyone. And he called up one of his buddies and said, "Oh yeah, everyone thought you were dead. There was a rumor that run, went around after you left." And at the same time, that's that's what happened to this guy. And um, so, so at the same time, I have to admit that it's that it, you know if you know if Emerson did just I'm um, like suddenly retcon this in, it's actually it's actually like he actually did an extremely good job of it. It's like it's it it's a great great way of thinking on his feet. And um, overall, it's like it's. It's like I, like in the end, I do think this this, and rereading it, it I think it does hold up um, a lot better than than Monster did on 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 its on a second reading. Uh, I think part, part part of that could be due to um his uh, um like um Nagasaki's um um in influences as a co writer because I don't know it's like it was I gotta admit it's like re like reading this series I mean like this is something. That, that if you do do decide to go out and read it, it's best to just just marathon it as much as you can because this is a series where like like it's got almost a hundred um um uh, mate like um sp- like um characters with with spe- with um speaking or like some kind of like um or roles with meaning and um he and a lot of the interests they've got like like he will just like drop characters out for volumes at a time and then bring them back and it's like oh yeah I know this guy how long has it been since we've seen him it's like and he he will just pull that off like and it like at like at a moment's notice and it's like wow it's like so it's so it's impressive like rereading all this and like this that's the sheer amount of planning that went that went into it i mean it's i take i take my hat my hat off to him i was like i was very i was very impressed by by it i mean overall it's like it's like i'm not i'm not quite sure if i'm ready to say like you know best series of the year yet but i do but this series did deliver on just about every on everything I was everything I was hoping. Even if it did did take um, one whole one whole rereading in order to it's like in order to get to it. So so overall, it's like, like I said, I highly I highly recommend the series. I mean, Urasawa um, is always it's like I mean, it's like even if he's not even if he's not like doesn't say like even not the most like innovative of storytellers. He's not like you know pushing boundaries. He knows how to work within the existing ones, um, almost better than anyone else. And anyone else I read right now. And um, I'm, and I certainly hope that his current series, Billy Bat, which, for your chance, um, springs upon the unlikely premise from the um, Mister Sparkle um, episode of The Simpsons. Um, I, I'm is brought over here. It's like in due in due order. I mean, hey. It's like this series. This is this is a series of top New York Times, um, 20th Century Boys is top New York Times bestseller list. There is an audience for his, for Urasawa's work, so I certainly hope that that Vertical or Kodansha, um, Kodansha Comics, um, like picks this up and brings it over. Like I'm um, now that we're now that we're going to be not getting um, Ur, like Urasawa on a regular basis. So, so there you have it. I mean, like, it's not it's like it's not perfect. It's like. It's like it, it's, it's there are parts of it that parts of the, some of the pl- plotting falls flat. It's like it, it it's a, it's something that, that utterly demands your demands your attention. And at the same, and also it's like you know there is a uh, certain like it's a series that also like um like wallows in Japanese nostalgia as well. So if you've got so if you're absolutely turned off by that kind of stuff, I mean people they they make references to all sorts all sorts of stuff, particularly the um thirteen thirteen seventy um Osaka X. Um, expo that that's a huge turning point right there but um i think but i think that it ultimately transcends its its um cult, its um culture specific appeal to the, to the strength of of urasawa urasawa and nagasaki's plotting and um and the characterization of the the cast as well who are it's like who are a thoroughly memorable bunch and um and the fact that you care about them will certainly carry you over through like through some of the books rougher rougher plots Sorry, for parts. I mean, it's like over. So, so overall, highly recommended. It's like go out, and it's all available. And now, twenty century as twenty century boys volumes one through twenty two, and arbitrarily um, um renamed as twenty first century boys one and two, for the final two volumes.
Well, that's great. Fantastic. Um, and uh, so it, it, the series is... Well, I'm sorry, excuse me? In the copies I got you for Christmas, right? Uh, yes, 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 I did. Oh, I said you... Well, you... I have the copies. <laughs> I haven't read them yet, sir. <laughs> you are missing out. I know. I understand that. Oh, yeah. Just like John about it. I'm sure he'd appreciate that. <laughs> uh, and uh, is there... Uh, do you know what you might be talking about next time? Not a goddamn clue at this point. Well, there you go. Yeah, I'll be I'll be surprised just as much as you guys are. Hey, how about that? Sometimes you just never know what you're going to get. <laughs> excellent, excellent. And with that, uh, we'll wrap this podcast up. Um, and uh, we'll catch you next time on Comics Picks by the Glick. Later, everyone. All right, good night.